Good evening, children. Well, let's begin with a new phylum, okay, where we were starting with Kingdom Animalia, the animal kingdom. And in our last lecture, if you remember, we had done the classification in different ways of those animals. We first classified the animals into non chordates and chordates. And if you remember, we studied all the phylums which were present under non chordates. Do you remember those names of the phylums, my dear children? The first one was phylum Porifera, right? Okay, this is what we're going to be learning today but let's just enlist those 10 names again after porifera was nidaria you commonly call nidaria cylindrata don't you so there was porifera after porifera came nidaria after nidaria came tenophora this is probably a new name for you phylum tenophora all right after the first three phylums the next three phylums are all about the worms the flatworms the round worms and the ringworms the flatworms are called as platyhelminthes the round ones are called as aschelminthes and the ringworms are known as annelida all right so, after Annelida, which began with an A, comes our next phylum, again starting with an A, called as the Arthropoda, the largest phylum and most successful one too. After Arthropoda, is, it is followed by Mollusca, followed by Echinodermata and the last one being Hemichordata. So, now children, today's lecture is all about the phylum Porifera. They are beautiful looking organisms, beautiful looking animals. In fact, when we see Porifera's, actually when we see, you know, when we're talking about Porifera, I'm actually speaking about sponges. And when we look into the ocean, you will not even realize that this is an animal because neither does it show any movement like any other animal would. It is just sessile, which means that it is attached to a substrate could be a rock or rather it is found on the ocean beds. Now, these poriferans have so many uh, qualities that you'll be, you'll be able to see in today's lecture. It's going to be really fun. Let's start. Well, starting with phylum porifera, where does the name come from? It starts with pori, which means pores. And when we say the word fera comes from ferin, which means bearing. Bearing means having. So these are animals which are having pores on their body surface. All right. Now, if you remember in the last lecture, all of the ways that we had classified animals, right? Like according to their grade of organization, whether it was cellular or tissue or organ, then according to their symmetry, according to the coelom, according to the uh, number of germ layers and the segmentation this is the same way that we are going to be studying each and every phylum so that it becomes easier for you all right studying it in one big essay is not gonna help what are we gonna do we're gonna learn it in pointers our first point phylum porifera the habitat we see that these are mostly marine animals all right mostly found in marine sea waters very few like one which is called as the spongula is a freshwater sponge all right after that when we come to the body symmetry now body symmetry do you remember the types there was asymmetrical bilateral radial do you remember those well when we talk about this phylum in this phylum there is radially symmetrical but mostly they are going to be asymmetrical animals or rather some of them very few are radial mostly are asymmetrical after symmetry we come to the next point of germ layers now this here would be actually no germ layers because children germ layers are the ones which generally give rise to the tissues and we know that phylum porifera has a cellular grade of organ sorry a cellular grade of organization when we say a cellular grade of organization this means that there are many cells put together it is a multicellular organism but these cells have not come in such a way together that they are able to form a tissue because they don't have junctions between them. There are junctions, if you remember from our tissue lectures, that there are junctions which are holding on to cells to come together and stay together and that is what helps in the formation of tissues. Whereas in the sponges between two cells, there are no junctions present. All right. That's why it remains as cellular grade of organization. Now, 
when we see the organization just like what we said cellular grade they are multicellular animals still staying as cellular grade of organization the body shape very interesting body shapes can be seen they are vase shaped or you may find them as cylindrical shapes can you see how beautiful these are they are so colorful uh, organisms which are found in the sea which actually makes the sea very beautiful to look at so they are vase shaped and cylindrical now look at this sponge here can you see it has one big major opening on the top over there all right so now let's see what this is all about the most important uh, characteristic of phylum porifera is that it has a water canal system now what is this water canal system or you may also call it as the water transport system it is a system through which obviously water is going to be transporting or traveling but whenever you imagine this sponge you would ideally think that ma'am if water is going to enter into this sponge since i am saying that it is a transport system then water will naturally enter into this big hole over here don't you think that well let me tell you it's exactly the opposite do you remember when i told you phylum porifera have these small pores minute pores millions of those minute pores all around the body wall now the those minute pores are what we call as the ostia okay the minute pores are called as ostia and children it is through these ostia that water is going to enter into the sponge through those ostia water will be entering in so that's why these are called as inhalant apertures okay inhalant apertures now after the water has entered through this whole body wall okay water is entering in then the water is going to obviously be circulating in the middle the whole middle area is hollow and water will be circulating in it and it circulates in that space area over there which is going to be called as the spongocoel what do you call it as it's called as the spongocoel why is it called as spongocoel spongocoel sponge means porifera but seal stands for coelom so this is actually the cavity or the coelom of the sponge and we will see also that this is also called as the paragastric cavity because this whole canal system that we're going to be seeing is going to be helping in the nutrition or rather the digestion of this sponge so now what have we covered that water is entering in through ostia circulating in through that spongio seal and ultimately it is going to be removed out through the osculum what is the osculum the osculum is that one big opening which i spoke to you about this over here this one major opening is what we call as the osculum over there okay so now we have small openings here which are called as ostia the cavity in between which are called as spongio seal and that one large opening outside which is called as the osculum all right so these are the major important parts of the water transport system or the water canal system in the body of a poriferan all right okay now when we talk about this whole water canal system we would also know like to know what is the use of it why does it have it well this water canal system since it is allowing the current of water to pass through it it is helping in so many ways it helps in a way for nutrition it helps in a way for respiration and it also helps in a way for excretion did you ever think if water is coming in and it's being utilized inside there are going to be special cells inside which will utilize things from the water and rest will be thrown out so if the rest of the water is thrown out can i say that this is a form of removing the waste removing the waste would be a, a topic from ex excretion so naturally this water canal system is helping in nutrition respiration and excretion of that poriferan all right look at this gif i have a beautiful picture here what they've shown here is they've injected a fluorescent dye at the base of the sponge can you see how that dye is going to enter into the sponge and look at the dye coming out through that one opening which is known as our osculum can you see that children such a beautiful looking dye one more sponge okay just similar to the diagram we saw a little while ago 
all that fluorescent dye which is being put inside remember this is not harmful to the sponge all that fluorescent dye is going to be coming out through that one osculum showing that even water would be entering through ostea and coming out through osculum in the very same manner because the dye is also coming out along with the water one more over here look at these sponges here they look like a whole bunch of chimneys with smoke coming out of it and what is it actually it is actually that fluorescent dye that we were talking about so these are the ways or these are illustrations of the water canal system in a sponge where the water enters in through the ostea passes through the sponge seal and comes out through the osculum all right so let's see some other points in the phylum porifera when we take a transverse section of any sponge then we see basically that the whole body wall you know that inner the whole sponge inside is hollow so when we talk about that body wall then what exactly is the body wall made up of it's made up of two layers all right so let's see or let's have a look at what those two layers are all about initially the layer here the first layer the outermost layer this layer is known as the outer epidermis and that outer epidermis is also called as the pinacoderm what is it called as it's also known as the pinacoderm all right remember this as pinacoderm now why is it called as pinacoderm because can you see these cells over here these cells over here are cells which are called as pinacocytes what are they called as they are cells so can i use the word site and they are called as pinacocyte all right so these pinacocytes are the ones which are forming that outer layer of the body wall which we are going to be calling as the pinacoderm all right then next to that the second layer the inner layer is going to be called as the coanoderm first we had the pinacoderm second layer is the coanoderm now why is this called as coanoderm naturally there'll be presence of certain special cells there and those cells over here this is how they are these are the cells can you see they have flagella on them okay these cells are going to be called as coanocytes okay so we have pinacocytes at the pinacoderm and we have coanocytes at the coanoderm i hope this is clear now when we talk in between these two layers one layer is pinacocytes the second layer is coanocytes in between that the whole matrix area that you are seeing here i am talking about this area over here this whole matrix region that you are able to see here this region is called as the mesohyle what is it called as it is known as the mesohyle so the two layers in between that is matrix and that matrix is called as mesohyle all right so i hope body wall is clear for you okay now remember the coanocytes coanoderm well let's see what they're all about now these coanocytes look at this this is how it looks like use another color this is how it looks like okay can you see that they look like they have a collar like apparatus over here can you see this collar like structure here that is why these cells may also be called as collar cells what do you call them as you can call them as collar cells so these special cells over here are known as coanocytes or even they can be called as collar cells where are they present they are present in the inner surface okay outer you'll call it as the covering inside you know it is hollow then what about the inner area that inner lining is being formed by these collar cells or you may call them as coanocytes all right so what are they doing these are the ones that are going to be lining okay they're going to be lining the spongio seal do you remember what was spongio seal wasn't it the cavity inside the sponge all right so this is lining the spongio seal and lining the canal also the water canal now we see here nutrition is holozoic means that the water is actually the nutritive mode water is entering in bringing in the food and since it is coming into the body like as if it is coming into the mouth you would call it as a holozoic type of nutrition all right digestion is intracellular intracellular means inside a cell now which cell is what i'm asking you 
there are cells here can you see these blue colored cells all right these blue colored cells here all of these blue colored cells here these cells here children they are called as amebocytes okay why are they called as amebocytes they are called as amebocytes because they have an irregular shape okay but what is the function of them this is the region where that intracellular digestion is actually taking place so digestion is intracellular and it is happening at the level of those amebocytes okay also we see that the if at all the food is extra then naturally we can i call this as reserve food yes so this reserve food is stored and where is it stored this reserve food is stored in cells which we may call as thesocytes what are these cells called as the cells are called as thesocytes so now children on this slide itself we have learnt names of three different cells okay which are those three cells that we learnt names of first initially the coanocytes right second okay these coanocytes let us just also see the structure where not only does it have a collar but also there is a flagella now what is this flagella there for flagella obviously is a structure meant for movements right what is the structure meant for over here well whenever water enters in can you see this direction of water coming in okay so this is the water flowing in and i always told you that in the body of a sponge water is going to be flowing in through minute pores which are called as ostea the water enters in and it is going to flow through that sponge seal and it always is pushed upwards generally we would expect water to fall downwards wouldn't we but here the water is pushed in an upward direction who is it there must be some structure inside which is pushing that water up in an upward direction and what is that structure it is actually these flagellas of these coanocytes which are constantly in a beating in an upward movement which helps that water current to be flowing upwards and that is why even that fluorescent dye that you saw was coming out through this one opening and what was that opening called as was it called as the osculum and due to these collar cells or these coanocytes remember the word coanocytes so due to these coanocytes water when they enter no matter which part of the body the water enters in it enters in through the sponge seal and it is going to be coming out through that osculum all right all right so now that was the first cell that we saw that was coanocytes all right the second cell that we saw were these were these amebocytes and these amebocytes are the cells which are helping in intracellular digestion and the third cell that we saw was called as the thesocytes what is it called as thesocytes all right okay coming to our next point here we see sensory cells or even any structure like a neuron or anything to do with nerves sensations nothing at all is going to be present in the phylum porifera all right also we see when we talk about the body support do you remember when we did body support we had things like ex exoskeleton and we had endoskeleton too all right now in that when we did the classification i told you that it it can be classified into two ways either it could be when we're talking only about lower when we talk about lower animals okay or when we're speaking about higher animals okay lower animals or higher animals do you remember the type of skeleton that was present well in the lower animals there was only exo skeleton whereas when we talk about in the higher animals there was both exo and endo skeleton all right so now what we see over here is that the lower animals are expected to be having only exoskeleton but children here is an exception where porifera are all lower animals but poriferans as a skeleton do not have exoskeleton in fact 
they have structures which are forming the endoskeleton and let's see what that is all about the endoskeleton here is a whole structure it is supported and it is made by sorry it is made by either calcareous or siliceous spicules calcareous or siliceous spicules okay either the spicules could be there or they could be spongin fibers spicules or spongin fibers some of the sponges may have both present all right as a skeleton or even there are some sponges which may not even have either one of them present so remember these names either there can be spicules or there may be spongin fibers present okay the spicules may be calcareous or may be siliceous and either both can be present or even none all right either both or even none may be seen also all right okay now let's continue when we talk about the reproduction part okay reproduction in sponges being a simple animal you might think it might be only asexual reproduction but no children what we see here is when we talking about the body of sponges the sexes are not separate okay so we see here that they are mono they are, the sexes are not separate which means that uh, we see that they are uh, some of them mostly there are uh, ones where the males will be um, maturing first the an, another sponge where the females will be maturing first all right so one is going to be behaving like a male the second will be behaving like a female so we see here that they are hermaphroditic or monoecious too okay we see that the reproduction could be asexual by fragmentation and if at all sexual reproduction is to be taken place then it is being done by the formation of gametes okay so now what the interesting part here is let's say you see this sponge over here well i will tell you looking at this figure that this is a this is a sponge which is behaving as a male sponge now if i'm saying that this is a male sponge why am i saying that what's happening here is the male sponge is removing out actually the sperms are coming out and this is a process called as spawning and those sperms will be deposited inside the body of a sponge which is a female so this is actually the gametes which have been formed and transported from one sponge to another sponge so since those gametes are entering inside the body of the female sponge may i call this fertilization as an internal fertilization correct or not so this is an internal fertilization all right now after we've talked about fertilization let's talk about cleavage the cleavage over here is said to be having a hollow blastic cleavage now what's the meaning of hollow blastic cleavage this means that there's going to be the presence of very little or are or no yolk at all when we say that the egg is being formed we would naturally th tend to think that with an egg there should be yolk inside so when yolk over there is very minimal or not present at all this type of cleavage the divisions happening from one cell to two to four to eight the divisions happening there is what we call as cleavage how this how it is growing but here this is only the cell we don't have only the egg we don't have the yolk part hence it is called as the hollow blastic cleavage all right when we see the development here what do i mean by development i mean that whether at all is there a larva present or the larva is not present now if larva is present then this will be called as an indirect development and in sponges the larva form is present so we say that the de the development is indirect and it has larval stage and that larva stage which is going to be there it is morphologically structurally different from that of an adult sponge in fact the larva stage of the sponge is able to move whereas the adult sponge will never be moving at all okay now the stages in the larval okay let's see the names of those they can be called as parenchymula they can be the next one is trichymella and the third one being amphiblastula let's just see how these uh, two of them look like okay look at here this is the diagram of a parenchymula okay and this is the diagram of an amphiblastula these are just names of larval stages of the sponges all right okay now coming next 
when we see just like what I spoke to you a little while ago, all right, when we talk about the reproduction, if an adult sponge is going to be releasing sperms, it enters into the uh, female sponge and it going, it's going to fertilize the egg over there and ultimately what is formed, can you see this over here, this is the larva formed, okay, the fertilization, this is the egg, these are the sperms approaching it and then the fertilization happens, so this structure that you see here is the larva which has been developed. Then the larva is released and the water will be carrying away that larva and then the larva will go to another place and it will ultimately settle down there to become an adult sponge, okay. So we see here that the sexual reproduction involves a larval stage and that larval stage, look at this here, larval stage that moves, alright. Adult sponges always stay in one place only, alright. Now when we see here about sponges, okay talking about their regeneration power well sponges do have a good amount of regenerative power so they are the the whole regenerative system of a sponge is actually very well developed okay all right look at this beautiful sponge looks like big uh, chimneys okay with smoke would come out sponges are said to be evolutionary blind of shoots now why, wh how, how did all this come from? When we talk about evolution, obviously we would think that if any given animal is there in front of you, it, it must have either come from some other organism previously, it has developed or rather it will develop into another organism or it will evolve, alright. But when we talk about sponges, these are the only ones where no other group has evolved from them. And since no other group has evolved from the sponges, that's why we say that porphyrins are evolutionary blind offshoot, okay. So blind offshoot because there is no development of any other group which has evolved from sponges. Alright, now coming next, we talk about that there are three different classes of porphyrins which are seen, alright, those three classes. Now, before we start with the classes, can we have a quick recap of everything that we have done until now? Just try to recollect what all we have done. What was the symmetry of sponges? It was mostly asymmetrical, some were radially symmetrical. What about the whole uh, water canal system? Do you remember that water canal system and do you remember the constituents of it. Well, water canal system started with an ostia, okay. Ostia were, what were the ostia? They were all those minute pores that were present. Remember that, the minute pores. So, here if I am going to be drawing a substratum, okay, I have a substratum and on that substratum, if I am going to be drawing sponge, Alright, if this is my sponge on the substratum, I see that my sponge has several, several of these minute pores which are serving as small openings. Okay, these pores, what do I call them as? These are called as ostia. Alright, and then inside is the whole body cavity and the body cavity, was it, wasn't it called as spongio? seal okay body cavity was called as the spongio seal which was all inside over here okay it was also known as the paragastric cavity remember that and then this one final opening which is present over there that was called as the osculum okay so basically when we're talking about the water flow remember over here there was a water canal system so here the water will enter in through ostia and then the water will flow through the spongio seal. Remember how the water is flowing? Because inside there are cells present. What were those special cells called as? Weren't they called as coanocytes? Okay, so these coanocytes which have the flagella were able to produce an upward movement of that water flow and that is why the water is always going to be flowing in an upward direction out through that osculum. 
all right and this is the whole water canal system of the sponge that we spoke about then what about the reproduction of the sponge and what about the skeleton remember the skeleton had either spicules or spongin fibers remember those spicules and spongin fibers these two either they could be present simultaneously together or they would be absent what about reproduction there was asexual and there was sexual too sexual reproduction was taking place by formation of gametes and these gamete formations we saw that the male sponge will be undergo spawning release the sperms and the uh, female sponge will be accepting it inside since it is going inside we say that this is internal fertilization all right okay so now let's just continue when we continue about sponges we see that ahead that there are three classes which are belonging to this phylum okay the first class look at the name here first class is called as the calcarea second class is called as the hexanct tilida okay next third one it was called as the demospongiae so now when we talk about all of these three classes we want to know basically what are the characteristic features of each of these sponges and also which are the examples because it is these examples which are going to help us in our entrance exams all right so first talking about calcarea when we speak about the calcarea okay here first of all they are found in the shallow marine waters shallow okay where you can see that the surface is not or rather the deep sea bed is the bed is not so deep inside as it normally would be then these sponges either could be solitary means they can be found all alone or they may be found in many groups which would be known as colonial and then the body structures are simple over here not to further advance and the the spicules which are present the skeleton these spicules are calcareous when i say calcareous this is the reason why we're calling it as the class calcarea all right now when we talk about this calcarea let's see the examples which follow it okay the first example is called as sicon or scypha okay second example is this one here look at this beautiful looking one here okay this is the one which is radially symmetrical remember remember i told you that there are radially symmetrical sponges too well this is it and it is called as leucosolenia okay leucosolenia this is the one which is radially symmetrical sponge all right okay also look here another one a beautiful looking one that is grantia all right all of these are belonging to the phylum which is called as calcarea okay now after calcarea let's move on to the second class okay now in that class uh, in the after the class calcarea we come to the second class hexat hexatintilida and this let's see why it is called as hexatintilida now hexa generally means six doesn't it okay so now let's see like when we have a hexagon so let's see why it is called that initially let's see where are these found these are found in the deep sea waters all right second we see that these are always found to be solitary alone and look at the reason why the spicules which are found here are six rayed spicules okay and they are siliceous when i say that they are siliceous it's because they are made up of silicon dioxide and that is nothing but glass okay so can you see how this looks also all right so we can see that uh, why it is called as hexatintilida all right okay? let's see the examples which are there here is that what we were talking about okay the this is also called as the uh, venus flower basket what is the scientific name of this it's called as u plectella u plectella this u plectella is also known as venus flower basket now whenever we come across mcqs of poriferans this is one of the most important mcqs which can be asked upon in porifera and more commonly they use the word venus flower basket okay second example remember the glass silicon dioxide the, okay that over here that's why this is also called as the glass rope sponge okay what is the scientific name is called as hyalonema okay hyalonema because it is looking uh, it's called as the glass rope sponge because the skeleton inside will be of silicon dioxide all right okay now continuing further 
we come to the third class and that is called as the demo spongiae. Demo spongiae. Now, what is it that we have to see here? First of all, this is a type which is found both in marine water as well as in fresh water ones too. Means if you find sponges present in rivers, then it's going to be this sponge definitely. Okay. Also, these are colonial. Okay. Skeleton. Now look at this here. The skeleton here contains, what does it contain? It contains siliceous spicules or it may contain spongin fibers or it may contain both means that there are spicules also there are fibers also there may be both or they may there may not be any uh, any skeletal structures present at all so we see here that this is the example when we were talking about the body support where either both the spicules and the fibers will be present or both will be present or none of them will be present okay all right now <clears throat> Let's see some example over here. First example here, spongilla. Okay, this spongilla is that sponge which we will be finding in fresh water. And even euspongia. This euspongia is also known as the bath sponge. Okay, now previously it is actually that men used to go to the deep sea and take out these sponges from the deep sea and they would find, uh, they would take them out, they would clean them, they would cut them in a proper shape and then they were taken to the market for selling. And those were, that is the reason why uh, it is called as the bath sponge because then it would be used for cleaning during bathing, all right. But nowadays, when you refer to sponge, no one is actually going to think about these real sponges coming from the ocean. Nowadays, everything is synthetic. But yes, there was a time where in the market itself, these sponges were being used which came from those deep seas. Alright, so that is euspongia and spongilla too. Look at this interesting looking one. Well, if I tell you, don't get scared. This is actually the common name is called as the dead man's fingers. Okay, so now if I tell you, doesn't it look like a dead man's fingers? Not only fingers, why am I calling it dead man's fingers? Look at how pale it looks. Look at how that it, it just has seems to have a pale or no color effect to it. Okay, and the scientific, scientific name of this is called as Chalina. Okay, it's called as Chalina. So now, as we have gone through all the examples also from phylum porifera, okay, let us come and look into some of uh, another example, okay, let's just remember this, Sycon, remember this, Euspongia. Let's come to uh, this one over here and it explains that even this belongs to the families which are called as Potamo. Lepidae and spongy lidae. Okay, which was this sponge? This was the spongilla one. And do you remember what was characteristic about spongilla? Wasn't it that it is belonging to fresh water? So if you find a sponge in the river, it is most probably spongilla which is found over there. Okay, let's come forward to some MCQs here. The most important characteristic or character of all sponges, which is that? Is it cilentron? Is it herbivorous nutrition? Is it coanocytes? Or is it only sexual reproduction? Well, remember the cilentron, no, cilentron would be the uh, generally from the next phylum when we were studied Nidaria. Herbivorous nutrition, no, because these sponges can also feed on the dead and dead and detritus matter which is there in the deep sea. Coanocytes, yes. What was coanocytes? Weren't those those collar cells? Okay, cells which had collars and had flagella too. Okay, and what was the work of these collar cells? Didn't they help in the water movement, the current of water in an upward manner in that water canal system? Yes, and only sexual reproduction? No, remember sponges also had asexual reproduction. Correct. Okay, coming to our next MCQ. We see that in sponges, there is, let's see all of these. First of all, radial symmetry, okay, a, a true coelom. Third, in fact, in sponges, if you remember, it, they were acelomates, poriferans. A single exit and a numerous number of mouthlets, is that correct? 
Fourth, a single mouthlet and a number of exits. Which one is correct? A single exit and a number of mouthlets. Yes, didn't, weren't there so many ways for water to come inside and only one way for water to go outside? Yes, but in this question, even radial symmetry will be an answer too because we saw that even some of the sponges, maybe not only all of them are asymmetrical, some may also be radially symmetrical. All right. Which of the following are multicellular grade organisms? Didn't we just read about this? Grade of organism means level of organization. Well, when we talk about that, sponges were the ones which were cellular. Remember that? And they, were, they remained as cellular. They do not advance up to becoming tissue grade of organization. When we talk about the others, they are all going to be advancing and they are forming tissues, alright. So, when we talk about the multicellular, when we talk about prokaryotes, these are unicellular. Vertebrates, these are all organ, organ system level. Cylentrata, cylentrates, these are tissue level, talking about hydra, talking about jellyfish. But when we talk about sponges, these are remaining as only and only as cellular grade of organization. Next. Cells which create water current and ingest food, okay, creating water current and ingesting food in leucosolenia and in other sponges, okay, creating water current, doesn't this ring a bell? Wouldn't it be none other than our coanocytes for creating the current of water and that's why water is flowing upwards, okay. Now, the flagella here also allows water to come inside the sponge. Okay, so that's why ingesting food is also a property. Okay, this is what we had seen here, a screenshot of where we had learnt about the coanocytes over there. All right. Next, endoskeleton of sponges is made up of, remember this here, endoskeleton, we spoke about it. How did we speak? We say that there were either spicules or spongin fibers or we also said that there may be both or there may be none. All right, so we have all of these here and what is that? Cartilage bone, not at all. Calcareous spicules, yes, but along with that also, there may be calcareous or siliceous spicules and spongin fibers or there may be only spongin fibers also. So, our correct option would be this one here, okay. Okay, now coming to the next question. Symmetry in leucosolenia. Symmetry in leucosolenia is, what is the symmetry over there? Do you remember, this leucosolenia was the one over here. And I had told you very particularly that this is the sponge which has got, or which is radially symmetrical. So, the symmetry found here is radial symmetrical. Alright. Next, when we talk about the Venus flower basket, do you remember this Venus flower basket? Yes, the ones which are looking like glass, the beautiful looking sponges here. Okay, it is the name of, remember this, it was the new name of Euplectella. So, this is the answer over here, Euplectella. Okay, that was Venus flower basket. Now, what was the other example that we had seen? It was also called as Hyalonema. It was also known as Hyalonema. Okay, now next. Sponges need a continuous current of water flowing through their bodies. Now, we're talking about the water canal system here. And when we talk about the water canal system, why is it needed? Remember, the ostia, the spongocele, the osculum, those coanocytes uh, working inside. What was it for? It was all to provide these, it was all there for providing these over here, respiration excretion and reproduction too. Oh, sorry, it was all for only, okay, sorry, not of, not reproduction, the, that would be only respiration and excretion, not reproduction, okay. So, respiration, excretion, along with this, there was also one more and it was nutrition, okay. So, do not forget that, okay. Now, next, which of the, which of, which one is not typical to all the porifers, okay. What is not typical to porifers? Perforated body has to be there, that is why it is a porifera. Coanocytes have to be there, that is why the water canal system will be present. System of pores and canal, definitely both have to be present. Look at the last one, presence of spongin fibers, well, these spongin fibers that are there, 
they either will be present or they may not be present but that does not have or that rather that does not mean that it cannot be a porifera if spongin fibers are not present so that is not a criteria for it to be called as a porifern okay all right coming next venus flower basket again the same question just i'd like i'd add i've added this question to tell you that it is also called as or rather it is also given the name of the dried skeleton of it is the dried skeleton of what let's see over here you spongia you plectella do you remember this name spongilla or leucosolenia here this is what we had seen wasn't venus flower basket the the common name for you plectella yes or no all right now we see which sponge is found in the river now if i say river then naturally you understand i'm talking about fresh water and out of these four which were those sponges which were fresh water sponges wasn't it tell me tell me do you remember wasn't it the green colored one it was called as the spongilla yes or no this is what we had seen here spongilla found in river or fresh water all right now next classification of phylum porifera is based on now when we classify porifera what is the most important thing seen over here well children that answer over there would be on the basis of spicules which are present okay the basis of spicules will help us to classify our poriferans all right now what i'd like you to do is when we uh, as we are completing one one phylum from this topic okay this kingdom animalia topic you must understand that it is an extremely important topic when i talk to talk about neat point of view why is that because ahead when we go into the human physiology chapters every every chapter or rather every system of our body okay is always going to be studied upon not only by human point of view but also when we talk about the animals too so when we talk about let's say we're talking about the reproductive system then when we say reproductive system we're not only going to be focusing on human reproduction we also will be focusing on reproduction happening in animals too so that is where the mcq start to get tricky and what do they do they include the reproduction part from any of these phylums and they will include it in the mcqs and naturally that would be a part of your syllabus because kingdom animalia is a part of your syllabus so all the different systems which we are going to be studying in these phylums is going to be equally important like when i told you right now that if i talk about the digestive system in a sponge who is help, who is helping it wasn't it a cell which was called as the amebocyte and wasn't that digestion over there called as the intracellular digestion do you remember that okay what about when i say that uh, what is the method of breathing over here wouldn't it be by diffusion all the whatever respiratory gas gases would be required here it would enter into the body surface of the sponge through diffusion or the through the general body surface so even that became a question where we have linked this kingdom animalia chapter along with the respiration chapter and that would be a part of our syllabus wouldn't it so that is why kingdom animalia you need to know that you remember the mcqs according to even the examples are going to be just as important okay now here when we talk about the examples what i'd like you to do is i'll go back to those examples and i'd like you to take screenshots of those examples because that is ultimately what is asked from this chapter they expect you to know the scientific names the common names from all of the non chordates and also from the chordates too okay so let's see over here when we're talking about this let's just take screenshots and what you can do is you can write it down okay so when we talk about the first class remember the first class which is the first class that we did calcarea in calcarea what were those examples there the first example sicon okay second example leucosolenia please take a screenshot of this okay third we had grantia these were the three examples we had for that class next class we did it was called as hexactinlida okay let's see that here this is the sixth spicule one examples here euplectilla and hyalonema please take a screenshot of this too 
next class that we had seen that was demospongiae and the examples here were you spon uh, the spongula the fresh water one and you spongia too that was the bath sponge please take an, a screenshot of this and let's not forget this scary looking one the dead man's fingers that was called as chalina take a screenshot of these examples too so children we see that along with all of this okay these examples are actually going to be the most important part that you take home today from today's lecture okay so what we'll do is we'll sum up our lecture today okay let's just uh, once again recollect what were the names of those phylums okay remember do you remember what a notochord was notochord was a group of tightly packed or rather it was a whole rod like structure and it was made up of tightly packed vacuolated cells and that was actually the beginning of a vertebral column to arise and that notochord is seen in some animals which we call as chordates not seen in animals which we call as the non chordates okay now coming again because we need to remember in order the names of the phylums okay the first phylum was porifera second phylum was cilentrata also called as nidaria okay third was called as tenophora okay fourth was called as the three worms we'll talk about platyhelminthes we talk about aschelminthes okay next one we talk about the ringworm annelida after annelida a for annelida next one was arthropoda so next is arthropoda okay followed by mollusca echinodermata spiny skin and the last one being hemi chordata all right all of these belongs to non chordates all right so these are the names of the phylums which you need to be knowing in order children okay so until we meet in our next lecture please i need you to know the names of these phylums one after the other so that we can continue our next lecture very smoothly i hope you remember today's poriferans examples most important the examples most important the skeleton too even the body wall and even those important cells called as the coanocytes and most important when we talk about sponge the first thing that should come in your mind was that there was a water canal system through which ostia allowed water in passes through the spongio seal comes out through the osculum all right so until our next lecture children do stay home stay safe and take care and do keep the studying on because i'm sure we're going to be giving exams corona will go away pretty soon bye bye take care